Hello there, neighborinos. Last few days have just been crazy with E3, but tonight I should be back on my usual schedule. I've got five big stories that need to be talked about. The first one is going to be all about how Oculus wanted to remove the option to stream your Steam VR games to the Quest. The second one is how there is no evidence of VR in sight or the Xbox Scarlet. And the next one is going to be all about the Vive Cosmos headset we can expect. The fourth is going to be the, the five biggest announcements out of Upload VR's showcase. And finally, anti-latency tracking systems for location-based VR. Obviously, as per the usual, you can expect timestamps for all of those in the description down below. So let's get into it. So it hasn't been long since I talked about the virtual desktop app that you can find for Oculus Quest. However, now that Oculus itself has caught wind that you can actually stream the Steam VR games to the Oculus Quest, the developer has been told that Oculus is forcing him to get rid of the feature immediately. He says, quote, Hi guys, I'm sorry to announce this, but Oculus doesn't want the Steam VR streaming feature in their store. I've been developing in VR five plus years, and as some of you may know, I like to experiment and push the envelope with the tech. I saw the ability to stream VR content from your PC as a very cool idea. I thought it would be a perfect fit for my app since it already gives you access to your computer. Like a nice bonus feature. I worked on this for months and was eager to improve the functionality as I received your feedback over the last few days. But according to Oculus, I am hurting the quest. And an Oculus spokesperson said in response, while we don't comment on the status of specific apps, our Oculus Store application submission system is designed to help ensure that our devices deliver a consistent, comfortable experience to customers. Apps are evaluated on a number of factors, including performance, input and safety with the goal of creating a quality, high value experience for all high VR consumers. End quote. So as far as I can tell, the primary argument that is coming from Oculus is consumer standpoint. However, if there's anything that you've, that you've obviously been believing, it is that, well, Long story short, the removal of this the removal of this feature actually hurts you because you aren't able to get quite the library of games that you would be able to otherwise. O Oculus's beliefs, however, are well, as they say, they are stem stemming more from the idea of preventing piracy or security measures. Hopefully we're able to find some other option to be able to play Steam VR games on Quest, but at present that doesn't really seem to be much of an option. So next up I do have to talk a little bit more about the about the Xbox Project Scarlet. So the other day when I talked about the Scarlet in the Microsoft E3 summary. Um, I was talking about it purely from a console hardware standpoint, but did not touch on the VR capabilities of it, or rather the lack of VR capability. A few things that we know right off the top are that the processor and graphical capabilities of this upcoming console are going to match those of many high-end computers. Well, I guess at this point, medium-end, but you get where I'm coming from. Anyway, many of those computers would be capable of running virtual reality. However, there are no plans on bringing virtual or even mixed reality to the Xbox at this point. And the last quote specific to Xbox simply says they don't have, quote, any specific plans to Xbox consoles, 
in virtual reality or mixed reality. So that being said, it may be very clear that even with that clear increase in power over the PlayStation 5, Project Scarlet may have already lost that console generation. Simply because they'll Sony is going to have that distinct lead in virtual reality, not only because the upcoming console is going to be, to be able to support their current generation of virtual reality, but also because they plan on releasing an upgraded version that is going to give us far better graphical and processing capabilities than we currently have on the existing PlayStation VR headset. So that being said, it I wouldn't really worry too much about getting a an Xbox too soon. So next up, I do have to talk at least a little bit about the Vive Cosmos. Recently, I talked about how there wasn't a whole lot known about the Vive Cosmos, whether it be release date, price, specifications, anything along those lines. However, the release date is confirmed for the third quarter, so sometime in the fall of 2019, and development kits are just now heading out to developers. That being said, when they do hit, we may be seeing quite a bit about it, like resolution, field of view, and tracking details. Price is going to be up for debate, but that'll depend mostly on the resolution and field of view. The other thing that they did manage to tease though was that it would be able to plug into a smartphone. While they didn't offer any specific details about it, one thing we can most likely surmise is that it's going to require a USB-C port in order to allow for all of that. And on, on top of that, it, like the other headset, it's likely going to require a Snapdragon 855 processor. So that is something that we may have to look forward to in the long run. Hopefully we can put a little bit more detail on it as time goes by within the next few months. The Upload VR E3 showcase was intense. They had a ton of trailers, gameplay footage, and all that jazz. As a part of all of that, The Verge has given us their list of the top five biggest announcements that they believe that they are super excited about. First one at the top of the list is After the Fall. This one is developed by the Arizona Sunshine devs, Vertigo. And this one is going to be another in a long line of zombie survival horror games. The next one on their list is Budget Cuts 2 Mission Insolvency. In this one, you have to escape the offices of an evil corporation that was replacing its workers with robots and evade the robots by getting around locked doors and opening wormholes. This one was developed by Neat Corporation and Fast Travel Games. So in the end, it's likely to be a little bigger than the first one, but at the end of the day, it's going to have the same style of gameplay. And the next thing on their list is the Imagine Dragons Beat Saber DLC. Personally, I am super duper excited about that too. I just put out a video about that like the day it launched. It was amazing. I was having so much fun being able to play Natural and Believer and, and all those. But th those ones are personally my favorite. Go check them out while you still can. It's only $13. And it it's a good chance for you to be able to enjoy a mainstream band on Beat Saber to be able to license all those music packs and maps and whatnot. The next one on their list is one that I am also super excited for. It's called Pistol Whip. This one is a combo between Super Hot and Beat Saber, making it an intense rhythm shooter. In this one, rather than having to be accurate necessarily, you just have to shoot the people along to the beat. 
so you don't really have to feel the need to get headshots all the time. You just need to be able to hit them. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. At least I hope. And then finally, the last game in their list is called Akron. So this one, you end up playing with your friends. Your friends would end up playing on smartphones while you're in your VR headset. And you play as Magic Tree trying to defend yourself against your friends who are playing as squirrels trying to steal your nuts. That, I think that was intended to be as, uh, what, what's the word? Um, what, you don't really want to know the word. Anyway, the ones that I'm personally excited about include Disciples of Dawn. That one doesn't really have any known launch date at this time and not a whole lot is known about it, but it does seem like a good RPG. The next one that I, I really wish I would be able to play is Soul Keeper VR. While the bulk of the gameplay seems like a direct Skyrim ripoff, that would still be good for me because um, there, there's this stupid glitch that I keep dealing with where I keep spinning around in circles so fast I can't even see what's going on. Happens all the time when I'm in the, in the middle of a dialogue box and I can't progress at all in the game. Makes the whole thing horrible. Let's see. Like I said, Pistol Whip, something sounds amazing. The best combo of my two favorite VR games to play. Let's see. Aspire 1. Ah, yes, that one. That one's going to be good. That one's going to be launching on all the headsets. And it's going to be launching in August. So that one is going to be a good stealth shooter along the lines of MGS. So... If you enjoyed the early Metal Gear Solid games that were designed by Konami or Hideo, Hideo Kojima, rather, then you may like this one. Let's see. Rogan, Thief in the, Rogan the Thief in the Castle seems interesting. Seems like it has a decent story. But as far as gameplay goes, well, seems okay. And then yeah like I said the last big thing that I am super excited about is the Imagine Dragons DLC for Beat Saber so hopefully you guys are excited about some of those if you aren't if you are if you aren't let me down let me know down in the comments below so let's move on to the final story shall we next up we do have to talk about anti-latency's tracking system which may very well compete with that of steam vr 2.0 it would end up working slightly differently from from what we're typically used to when it comes to light based tracking while most tracking, whether it be outside in or inside out, is going to be relying on lights projecting, projected from your touch controllers or handsets or whatever you want to call them. This one would end up working similar to radar in that there would be a single module attached to the HMD and depending on where you are in the room, Different infrared lights embedded in the into expandable floor mats would end up to conveying your position relative to those floor mats. So, say you're over here and you've got some some floor over here. That floor is going to tell you that it's that far away, and this floor over here is going to tell you it's that far away. So. Using a few more, that'll be able to triangulate your position quite a bit better than either kind of tracking typically can at the moment. That, of course, will be able to give you quite a bit better 
immersive experience than what we're typically used to. I am personally excited to see exactly how this will play out and what we can expect out of this system in the coming weeks or months. If you guys are still here, don't forget to check out my next video when I'll be going over the launch date of the HP Reverb. If you liked it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. And as always, don't forget to tell me how I'm such a horrible human being for giving you all this news. Ta-ta for now.